basically, now that you've signed a translation loss, even though you had already independently released a thousand copies, um, what basically what's the benefit now for for you as a band for signing to translation loss? How is this going to further the band along? And and what what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of doing it independently versus doing it now with translation loss? Well, I mean, the advantages of doing it ourselves are definitely we get paid more now. Um, when when you're selling a thousand CDs at twelve bucks a piece, the band makes a, a good chunk of change. Um, and it was that, it, it, it pretty much just, that's kind of the main reason why we did it right off the bat, is because that's all said and done after paying for all the packaging and all of our own advertising and PR that we hired and everything else, basically acting like a label. It's about as much money as we spent. So we figured, well, we got to sell a thousand of them to make all our money back. Then from there on out, we can choose either to do it ourselves again, just kind of keep making money, which, you know, is a rarity for a band like us. Um, or, you know, we can find a label to do it and therefore hopefully get it out to much more people in the world. I mean, we, we sold those thousand CDs strictly through our MySpace page, which is, you know, and nowhere else. Mm -hmm. um, we only only recently were uh, allowing a couple different websites to buy some from us, uh, like stonerock.com and, and, and our old label, The End Records, uh, uh, a handful of them. But, you know, so now it, we got to a point where I was spending most of my week just shipping packages out all, all week, which is which is great. It's like a second job. <laughs> but, um, you know, at the same time, I, I, I felt like, well, if we could do this much on our own, Imagine what a label with like huge distribution, and, you know, and a lot of influence could do. Um, and especially when, I mean, I, I've been shipping CDs personally to uh, Lithuania, uh, Jerusalem, Tokyo, fucking Mexico City, um, just about everywhere in Europe, uh, and then just uh, in every state in, in, in the U.S. It's like, well, shit, if we're reaching as many people by ourselves, imagine what a label like Translation Law can do with, you know, with the great distribution and whatnot. So, you know, it's really coming down to freeing me up so I can actually offer more time on playing music and writing songs and, and, and also doing my art, which is something very important for me. Um, and, you know, and then now, because of Translation Law, uh, a, a kid in Alabama or a kid in Berlin can walk into a, a Best Buy or whatever the German equivalent of that would be, and, <laughs> you know, order our CD like it was nothing, just like it was anybody else, you know. Um, in some areas, they might actually already be in the Best Buy. It just, you know, it just really depends where, uh, where what city they're in, but at least no matter what, anyone in the world will now be able to get it easily and not have to wait for my ass to get around to shipping it. So to what do you attribute the, the success of simply selling through through MySpace? For all the, the hundreds and thousands of bands out there with a MySpace page who are, you know, desperately trying to sell copies of their home press C D, what what kind of advice or recommendations do you have for these bands? Some of them are very talented. They just don't have either the financial backing, you know, the, the money in hand to create and promote themselves. What would you recommend for them? From your experience, uh, the, um, the music industry has changed a lot, and that there shouldn't be so much focus and strive to get that you know ever exclusive record deal. And it, 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 it'd be important now for bands to actually uh, consider hiring a PR company. Um, uh, well, there, there, there's a couple of different things. You should hire a PR company. You should hire a booking agent, um, and those are also. PR companies are a little easier to come by, but booking agent can be very hard because you have to be out there. You kind of have to already be out there playing a lot to get this one. But you get the PR company, and then what they'll do is they'll work their ass off, getting your hands and fees of people who are going to give a shit and listen to it, and then hopefully you know talk about it. And then when they start talking about it, word spreads and becomes a viral thing. You already know it. An unsigned band is being reviewed in magazines and talked about on the account with websites and online interviews like this, <laughs> it, it, it really just, just, it works wonders. It really, really does. Well, I can assure um, you that this interview will be the highlight of your career. <laughs> uh, absolutely. This is going to change my life right here. No, uh, you know, yeah, it, it always helps. It's always huge. Um, 
um, you know, there are a lot of fans out there that'll be listening to this kind of stuff, and and, and that's huge. And that's you know, uh, it's so due to our PR company, we we hire. Um, I first we hired my my dear friend Adrian Bromley, who had a startup PR company. He was our PR agent at uh, the End Records, and he, he broke off and started his own thing. And, and he untimely passed away, sadly enough. But uh, God, how long ago was that? Buffalo is just only four or five months ago. Um, and so, and then we hired our uh, another PR company that helped us when we were on the End Records, and that was called XO Publicity. They picked up with the you know. Radio left off and just ran with it. And before we knew it, you know, as an unsigned band, we were getting features, you know, not even just reviews, but like full blown features in Revolver Magazine and you know, great write ups and Terrorizer and, and stuff like that. And I mean, every time one of those kind of articles would come out, say Decibel Magazine, you know, it reviews the CD and gives it a, a great rating, and then we would just see our sales explode to the roof. Mm -hmm. Before we knew it, within Within four to six months, all thousand CDs were gone, and you know, uh, along with them, all the new stuff and and all, all the albums and T-shirts and everything else, and just really like it was wow. It made me realize a band can do on their own, not a label. If, mm -hmm. if if they're out there and they're working hard enough, they really have good music to back themselves. They can do it on their own. Yeah, the trick would be having having a great PR company. Yeah, you know, I, which is, uh, such things aren't cheap to hire for sure. But then again, you think about how much money you spend going into the studio, going to this, or you know, blow it. Uh, how much money bands blow on stuff and guitars in there? So I save a little bit of that dough, put it all together, and uh, you know, pay somebody to help get the word out. Definitely, definitely good advice. And I know you said that you're still in the process of, of writing the graphic novel, and obviously you said you're going to uh, Joe Cooper. Um, but is your book done? Is it available yet for fans to purchase? Uh, absolutely, no. It's definitely not done yet. So, um, it's, it's it's a work, the work in, in a long progress, I can say. Um, and the best place to look for it will be theexiologist.com. Um, where it'll be a lot of updates, a lot of this, a lot of downloadable stuff, and plus like lyrics and whatnot soon for the uh, for the record. So that's that's kind of what we keep going live here with that. And if all goes well, you should get 